as I said earlier, that we need to respect life and individuals. Life keeps, keeps throwing different situations. You know, and, uh, some days are very, very stressful. There is a lot of workload. There could be exam stress. There could be some trauma or tragedy. Somebody could be ill in the family. So that day is not going to be just like any other day. Again, there are various situations like festivals, occasions, weddings, birthdays, celebrations. And there are days when we are on vacation and there are days when we want to be out with friends. So in all these situations, your food plan should be able to accommodate all these situations. It cannot be so rigid that if any of these situations arise, the person is not enjoying, in fact, is feeling guilty and is even, you know, maybe trying to stay away from the celebrations and the occasions. So we need to make sure that it is not rigid because anything rigid will break. If you give a very, very strict kind of a food plan, which has, which is very monotonous, which has a lot of deprivations and restrictions, then it would be like the person would feel like he is in a boot camp. And initially he would say just, okay, it's, I have paid. So let me at least follow for a couple of weeks. And then when he's out of that, he was a foodie, but now he'll be greedy also because he has so much more cravings. Hence, there is no need for these restrictions and deprivations. And we don't want to give a food plan which is just to be followed for three weeks and then come out of it. We don't even want to give a food plan for three months or three years. We need a very, very sustainable food plan which stays for almost 30 years or throughout your life as it should be said. Again, there are many circumstances apart from the situations. What is the circumstance in which your client is living? Now, if they are students, where are they eating from? Maybe from the mess in their hostel? What about elderly? They have to look upon for food for, from their caregivers. They are not capable of cooking maybe. What about working couples? They are too busy to come back home and cook. So does your food plan take care of all of this? Or is it just written down as same for each one. We have to keep in mind all of this and much more when we design the food plan. That is why I always say that it is easier to get it on paper. It is easy to get food on paper, but very difficult to get food on the table. If the client comes back and says that he was unable to follow the food plan, then he is not to be blamed. You cannot say that you don't have a willpower or you are not motivated enough and that is why you are not able to follow. No, you need to carefully look into your food plan, find the flaws and redesign it. You need to check that where is it, what is it which is stopping him from following that. I always believe that the person who is cooking and the person who is eating should both be at ease. We are not individuals. We are all interlinked. We live in a family, in a society. So we are dependent on some people and we are again responsible and accountable to some people. So we cannot think of that person as a singular object. For example, if a young person walks in, let's say an adolescent or a teenager girl comes to you for a food plan, the food plan that you give is most probably going to be looked into by her mother and she's the person who's going to cook. Mother has to cook something special because you have put down something different in her food plan and she has to cook for the entire family in another way. The girl is not happy eating after a couple of days because she sees the rest of the family eating 
food of her liking and she has been put into some other kind of diet. After a few days, she starts eating the food that has been prepared for her and she also starts you know, picking up food from plates, uh, from the other kind of diet that is being followed in the house. Ultimately, she kind of says no to the food that the mother has cooked. And the mother also gives up saying that she is not interested in eating. Why should I take the hassles of cooking separately? It is all entirely, they blame themselves. They feel that we do not have the willpower we have wasted our money, we were not motivated enough and we are not able to follow a diet. But actually, who's at fault? We are at fault if we have given this kind of a diet. We need to make sure that the diet comes from the kitchen, is simple, is sensible, is sustainable. And hence, Again, I repeat that we need to work with the kind of food that the person is eating and not the kind of food that we think is good for them. This is not how it works. And the next point again, related to food. Our course, our entire course teaches us about food and nourishment that it provides. It teaches us about macros, and micros. It teaches us about the carbohydrates, or the fats, proteins, and the micros like vitamins and minerals. It is also teaching us about phytosterols and isoflavones and the fibers like the soluble and the insoluble. It is teaching us so much about food. But all of this is knowledge which a person who's studying the book should be knowing. Let's say a person who studies accounts has to know so much more maths. But we, we who are not studying accounts, all we need to know is that money is just, there is a transaction. We need to give it, we need to take it. We don't need to know about the other nitty gritties. Similarly, our client does not have to know about the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats, and so much more. That is something knowledge which we have gained and we should know how to use, but not burden them or overload them with this kind of information. For them, food should be something put lovingly on their plate. It is not just nutrients. They need to learn about the many other roles that food plays. And we are the people who are supposed to educate them on this and not on carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So we need to and make them understand that food is for survival. Food gives us a sense of security. Food gives us a sense of belonging. Food is there to nurture. Food is there in every occasion, be it celebrations, be it uh, sorrow, be it happiness, all kinds of places food is needed. Even ourselves, if we think, we also need our comfort food. There are times when after a hard day's work, you look forward to your cup of coffee. There are times when you want to spend time with your friends and enjoy that chaat or samosa or pakora, whatever is your go-to food. There are times like when I come back after long travels, I generally look for my comfort food, which is khichdi, papad, and achar. So these kind of food come in according to our moves and the reasons why we are eating. But when on diet, they are made to believe that if any such thing is done, then they are supposed to be guilty. They need to stick to the food portions, to the calorie count, to the plan given, to measure and eat. And they have been brainwashed to believe that if they do not do so, then they will never progress. We need to change this. We need to make them understand that it is not, food is not just counting calories. It is a blessing in life. Hence, we cannot be always measuring and making food. We should not uh, let them develop this fear, uh, uh, you know, feeling of guilt and fear every time they eat. 
because a person eating in guilt and fear would never be happy and if a person is not happy then there is no progress so to it is very important to make your under, a client understand that they need to eat food in a happy mode which is the rest and digest mode and not a stressful mode that is when the food would be digested well assimilated well and they would be getting the proper nourishment we are here not to make them skinny by starving by but to make them fitter and healthier by giving them the proper nourishment and teaching them the different roles of food and the last thing that i need to say is that there should be no shame in again when a client comes and owns up that he he or she has had a cheat meal then we should not be accusing them or blaming them that they have they again do not have a will power they are not motivated or they will never make progress they will never achieve goals these kind of things cannot be said we cannot even scold them because if we do so they would feel humiliated and they would even fear in telling you the next time what wrongs have they done or whatever out of your plan they have done instead we should provide them with alternatives we should explain to them that when this kind of a situation had come you could have done this also so that next time when they are in that kind of a situation they know what is right for them we need to explain to them how to eat properly and not always stick to the food plan because life will not let them do so as i said the situations keep changing so do not humiliate them do not make them feel ashamed because then they are never going to turn back to you they would in fact start fearing you or kind of you know just and uh, i'm um, uh, moving away from you so that is not what we want and similarly no scaring them how can we scare them when we are talking about future when a person comes in or when we meet someone and we say oh my god you already have this 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 problem you are already obese imagine what happens to you after 5 years or 10 years and what is going to happen if you don't take care right now and we kind of you know show them an entire picture which is going to really scare them we are not here to predict futures we are just here to focus on the trajectory the small steps that need to be taken right now in the present to help them achieve the goal if we just keep looking at the goal and not bother with the steps to be taken then we are not helping them achieve the goals we need to help them build on better behavior good habits healthy food plans and then to uh, uh, you know get them incorporate that in their life so that these things become consistent and then as slowly they progress on this they get good results they see they understand that this is how we need to carry on there should be no hurry to lose a uh, weight not obviously it is there from the side your client side but you need to be very careful that you yourself are not hurrying for results it is a slow and gradual process and this is what you are educating them about you need to give them time to adapt to the changes and then only we look for results so we need not scare them about what's going to happen and the last thing there should be no over pleasing also where some kind of strictness is required that should come in if the person is not showing up on time you can definitely cancel their appointments because you cannot keep the next one waiting who actually showed up on time if they are not giving you feedbacks or the recall sheets or the food logs or whatever you had asked for then it is time to show some strictness so with due respect to them we need to be strict where needed and not just keep pleasing them with uh, our words with all this said and done to bring it up in a small recap what are the things 
topmost things that we need to do to be good in this profession is first thing listen understand and be interactive secondly we need to talk about food plants which are actually food based and not based on nutrients hence we need to talk about more about food systems remember the food system the food pyramid that we have been learning right from school life that is what we can be telling them about and how to include the grains the pulses the vegetables the dairy the non veg everything but not about food groups how to eliminate dairy how to eliminate gluten how to eliminate uh, uh, lactose and what not that is not what we should be uh, grilling into them and so the meals should definitely come according to their culture and cuisine along with us this we should be encouraging exercise and a healthy lifestyle because a holistic fitness comes with all of them together so we should encourage them to follow an exercise routine to look into good lifestyle patterns of sleeping on time having their meal times are being fixed and so on and finally we should set the client on a progressive path and a fitness so that they are not yo-yoing between losing and gaining going on diets and off diets so to sum it up i would say that do what you love and love what you do and then you are ready to start